Okay, first let's look at this uh, new paper, which is just about to come out. It's, it's actually in preprint at the moment, and it's by Ganjavi et al. And the link is down there. So what they did here was they surveyed, they looked at the top 100 science journals and looked at what their policies were on generative AI. So I'll start at the bottom here, where they say GAI generate contents from prohibited. So only 5.7% of journals prohibit use of generative AI. And if you look keenly at the data, these are like top journals like Nature and uh, you know the other ones. So, and this is something that's evolving and over time I expect the policy to change. So basically what this means is 94.3% of journals actually allow use of generative AI. But when you look again keenly at the guidelines, they have two main things that come out of here. The first thing is when using generative AI, you should use it mainly to improve language and clarity, something that PaperPal helps you do perfectly. And secondly, when using generative AI, you must do it with human supervision. So those are the two most important things you need to remember. You need to, you can use it to improve language and clarity and you must supervise it. You can't let it lose and let it do things on its own. The other thing I would like you to know here is in the, in the middle area there, you, you would say disclosure of GAI use required. So most journals require you to disclose the use of generative AI. And on the right hand side, they're telling you exactly where they would like you to disclose it. So this is something that will become more popular over time where you would see people acknowledging the use of generative AI and you know mentioning it that they use it to improve language and clarity. Mm -hmm.